Greetings my brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Today my topic is Alive in You. You all heard this hymn. Alive, alive. Gee, Christ Jesus is alive in me. So when we sing this hymn, we really are energized. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Christ Jesus lives in me. So when we sing this hymn, when we contemplate on this hymn, we get energized and our lives are rejuvenated. But how well we can maintain that, that rejuvenation, how we can have it always, by whenever we interact with our fellow human beings, seeing Jesus Christ in the other person, then there can be peace always in that interaction, in that discussion, in that meeting, etc. Today we'll see from scriptures how we can be alive in Jesus Christ at every moment of our lives, singing this hymn, Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Christ Jesus is alive in me. Now when you look at John chapter 10 verse 10, very easy to remember, but this can keep us alive. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. But I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. My brothers and sisters, you've got to really think about this. When Jesus has given this word, he has made this statement. The thief comes to only steal, kill and abandon you. But I have come to give you life and that to life abundantly. We need to be really happy and peaceful when God has given this blessing of Lord Jesus Christ. He came to redeem us. And how well can we keep that faith and be alive both physically and spiritually. Always being active. We don't have to use hallucinogen or drugs, narcotics, to get into that hallucination feeling. We can always be with God. Just if we surrender our free will to Him and seek His will, you can be with Him always. Be happy. And being happy in Lord Jesus Christ will attract people towards you. Now, when you look at Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 22, for as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Another beautiful verse from Paul. Just as in Adam, everybody dies. It gives away our physical self. We are bones and flesh. That's pure dust. It would go away at some point. But when we are alive, we have God's breath in us. And that breath will give us that happiness, that joy, that peace. To be alive in Him and have that life abundantly. We just want, don't want to be just alive and you know being moody and being you know do what. But if we have God, if we being cheerful, and if you see that may create that cheerfulness in the other person with whom we interact in our families, in our offices, in our uh, neighborhood and in our communities. And that cheerfulness will even make spill over the life abundance, will even spill over from you to the person whomever you are interacting with. John chapter 3 verse 16 to 17. Famous verse. For God sent his only begotten son to redeem humanity from the clutches of sin and death. He came to save us 
to bring back that relationship with our Creator God, but not to condemn us. So we all are so fortunate and privileged for not being condemned, though we are all the worst sinners. Yes, we would have made, committed all the sins what, as a humanity, we have done, we have committed sins. Sins beyond our imaginations. But then God sent His only Son to redeem all of us at the same time. But He has kept some people predestined to be, continue to be wicked, continue to be evil, not to accept the redemption of Lord Jesus. We cannot do anything. We just have to shake the dust off and move on. But it is our duty, it is our purpose to convey the message. We would have done our duty after conveying the message and we are, our relationship with our Creator God remains active and alive. Now, Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. The word of God is alive and active. It is like a double-edged sword. It can differentiate between the good and the evil. Whenever we contemplate on the word of God, it comes alive. And that's what you would see. Some of the saints who have done it. For example, Saint Antony. You might have seen in our Roman Catholic churches. If you see the icon of Saint Antony, he will be holding the scriptures and then you will find the boy Jesus or the baby Jesus. So the word of God is becoming active and alive. The word of God is Jesus Christ himself. So when we contemplate, when we have that word, we become alive because he is present within us. He becomes alive in us and that would push all the other things away from you. The fear of death, the pride of life, the lust of life, everything will just vanish because he is truth. He is pure light and he is within you. And those words are the real words of wisdom, truth, joy, peace and happiness. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 do not be conformed to this world because we, are, we do not belong to this world when we claim that Jesus Christ redeemed us because he has gone to the Father to prepare a room for us. So when we finish our earthly journey, then we will be with him forever. And that's what Jesus has given us. He has promised us through the word. And he has given an advocate to give us the strength to navigate this life. He has assigned the guardian angels, the saints, the patron saints. And he has given his own mother to be alive with all the, of them coming together in glorifying our creator God. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. My brothers and sisters, when we sacrifice, if you look at the Old Testament, blood has to be given. But here, our Lord Jesus Christ has given himself as a sacrifice. By his blood, we are all cleansed. And every time we participate in the Holy Eucharist, we are feeding on his body and blood, and he comes and resides in us so that we become his body and his, his hand, his feet, his eyes. So when we have to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, for him he is truth. I am the way, the life and the truth. So we have to be the way, the life and the truth when, we, when he has consumed us. So death or life doesn't matter. All we have to do is to seek him, seek his word and the Holy Spirit will guide us at every moment of our lives and that is the way to be alive 
and be full blessed and abandoned life john chapter 11 verses 25 to 26 that's what i was talking about i am the resurrection of life whoever wants to come to the eternal kingdom is only through him and no one else that's period there's nothing beyond everything has to go through lord jesus christ if they have to go into the eternal kingdom exodus chapter 14 verses 13 to 14 we find that during the time the israelites when they were coming out of slavery from egypt god a creator god tells prophet moses do not be dismayed do not be worried do not be concerned i will fight for you the egyptian army they had all those arsenals which they can defeat bears the israelites had nothing but god said i will fight for you he opened the seas he made the egyptian chariots get stuck at the bottom of the sea there were two sheets of water walls where they walked past but the army of the egyptians could not do it god was fighting he is the creator he has predestined for the israelites people to go through that to get victory and they wanted for 40 years for them to understand that god is more important than bread romans chapter 6 verse 23 for the wages of sin is death but the free gift of god is eternal life in christ jesus paul's letter to the romans yes if we are sinning if we are not giving our bodies as a living sacrifice if we are not proclaiming god's word if we are not raising our voice for justice if we are greedy then these are all sins anything which is against god's laws and commandments if you do not love that's a sin and the wages of that sin is death death both physically and spiritually yes there are some sins which could be forgiven when we repent for it but if we do not repent if we do not reconcile with our creator god then death is for sure acts chapter 1 verses 3 to 4 we find jesus after he was resurrected he presented himself many times for people to understand that he is the creator god and he has gained victory over death and he presented himself many times to the apostles to a people so groups of people and at a time more than 500 people and finally at the time of ascension there were many people from who were still alive and that's what we read and it's also given in the history books of not only the bible but the other books now john chapter 3 verses 6 to 8 he this is the beautiful thing you must be born again when we understand that jesus redeemed us from the clutches of sin and death that is the time we seek his word and when we seek his word before ascension he tells receive my spirit i will send an advocate and that advocate will teach you everything so my brothers and sisters if we look at our lives we have been baptized to become prince prophet and priest and but as we grow up we understand how we can be that priest how we can be that prophet how we can be that prince of experiencing god's love being alive so when you experience being alive that is the rebirth rebirth in god Now Psalm 34 verses 11 to 13 
whoever desires life. Keep your tongue from deceit and evil. My brothers and sisters, when God resides within us, how can we speak words of deceit or words of evil or all those foul languages? We cannot. When we feed on God's body and blood, we have gifted and he comes and stays with us. And we cannot even utter for the sake of a joke. I see it in many, even in some of the fraternities, the brotherhood they call, but use foul language. Oh, it is a practice, it is a norm, we have been using it. No, my brothers and sisters, you have to put a stop to that foul language. You can't drink the cup of Lord Jesus Christ and also drink the cup of demons. If I look at alcohol, alcohol is the drink of demons. You can't drink alcohol which alters your mind. It's nothing less than a narcotic or a drug. But my brothers and sisters, if we have to be alive, we have to contemplate on these words of Lord Jesus and see how best we can keep becoming better and better. It is not going to be a one day. It's an entire life journey. We can overcome all those challenges with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, Exodus chapter 3, verse 6 to 8. This is the beautiful verse when God, creator God, reveals himself. He says, I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. When he says that, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob are all living because they believed in God. Likewise, whoever has believed in Lord Jesus Christ, they all are alive right from the time of the apostles to the modern day saints. Whoever believed in Lord Jesus Christ, they all are alive. And this is what is the proof. So when you are alive, you have to have life in abundance. And that life, even your physical bodies would have gone, but you're spiritually you are alive. Now Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 to 6. By grace we have been saved. My brothers and sisters, we cannot earn by our good deeds or by our good works or by our prayer life, or by anything else. Grace is the gift given by God. It's a free gift given by God. For all those who claim the Lord's redemption and follow His commandments, loving God and loving our fellow human beings. Now, John chapter 4 verse 14 the water that I will give will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So this is the abundant life Lord Jesus is telling us. This is the story uh, in the chapter of John chapter 4 is Jesus at the uh, well in the Samaritan village. So the water he is giving to that woman he says that water will overflow. It will be welling up to give eternal life. And that water is more important. That water of Jesus Christ will give us the everlasting spiritual life with him in his kingdom. Psalm 118 verse 17. I shall not die but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. So we have the proof here. We are not going to die if we have surrendered our free will to our creator God. We are going to be alive. This physical body may get destroyed but our soul will remain with him forever. But people who do not believe in the truth, they are already condemned. They will lose both their physical body as well as their spiritual bodies. Now, exactly what I said. John chapter 3 verses 35 to 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. My brothers and sisters, we find many Protestant brothers and sisters calling the saints the dead people, the dead saints. They're not dead. They're all alive. And alive 
abundantly in Lord Jesus. And this is the verse, chapter 3, verse 35 to 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, period. Psalm 118, that we just said now. James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves to God and the devil will flee from you. And that is the way to have abundant life. We have to submit, we have to surrender to our creator God. And then we can enjoy the beautiful, the abundant life in Jesus Christ. John chapter 12 verses 24 to 26. We find this, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground, it doesn't produce. But if it falls, so our lives are also like that grain of wheat. We need to use our life so that we have more souls brought to our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to produce from one human soul. We have to gather all the souls to him. And that can happen only if we go through the sufferings, if we take up our crosses and go through all those people who reject. But we will have abundant life because we believe in Lord Jesus Christ. Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 35 to 36. Whoever believes in Lord Jesus Christ will have eternal life. Now Matthew chapter 25 verse 45 to 46. You did not do to the heart of your brethren. Therefore the righteous will enter into the eternal life. See whenever we do not see the sufferings or the need of our fellow human beings. At the time of judgment, at the time of the final day, we will not see eternal life because God will just disown us because he is coming as a judge and he will be a righteous judge because now he is not changing. But when he comes again, first he came to give his life and save us and redeem us, not to judge us. But after giving us all this abundant life, and if we do not accept it, he is going to come and judge us. And that judgment is going to be real, the truth, how well we have loved our fellow human beings, how well we have loved our creator God. 1 John chapter 2 verse 2. He is the propitiation of our sins for the entire world. He is the propitiation of our sins. Lord Jesus Christ suffered once for the entire human race, past, present and future. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 5. For the living know they will die, but the dead know nothing. and They have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Even now today we find in our own time. That there are so many people who say, come on, I don't want to believe in afterlife. I don't want to believe. I just want to enjoy my life and die. Finish. They are already spiritually forgotten. And they are welcome to do that. So my brothers and sisters, if we have experienced life in Jesus Christ, and if we have to share that, we need to proclaim his word. In our capacities, whatever we can do, in whatever ways, our faith should be in action, word and deed. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Christ Jesus is alive in me.